Hello, it's Ryan Gordon. How you doing? Um, I thought today, since we spent so much time eating vegetables, we'd do something small and interesting and hopefully very short today. So let's um, go ahead and look at our main line real quick here. Um, this is stuff we zeroed out. I'm just going to nuke this for now because it's going to get rewritten anyway. So goodbye to that. So our main line looks nice and short now. We set everything up, and while we're still running the program, we're not asking to quit, we see if there's more audio that needs to be fed, we draw a frame, and then we do it again. And those that are astute uh, students of you know, software development in general are probably thinking, this is just cooking the CPU as hard as it can, which is true, because up here, when, when we're handling events, pull event just runs as fast as it can, and it never stops to wait for events. So we just run this as fast as we can. We just cook the CPU at 100% the whole time. And part of the reason we're doing that is because we need to be able to feed the audio device with more information as soon as it needs it. So, And if we were to wait until you move the mouse to feed more audio to the device, then you would just have skips over and over again while it's waiting for you to click on something or anything like that. So we're going to go and we're going to stop using the audio device queue to feed stuff once per iteration through this device, if necessary. No, iteration through this loop, if necessary. We're going to switch over to the other way that you feed SDL audio. Um, so let's go look at where we open the audio device at. There it is. Up here in init everything, where we init everything. Um, when we open the device, we always tell it you know, what format and frequency, and we want stereo or mono or whatever, etc., like that. And you can also give it a callback function, which we have not. We said null, because what we're going to do is, as we need to feed more data to the device, we are going to, there it is, cue the audio as necessary. But this is sometimes an inefficient way to do it because you have to feed it as quickly as possible. It would be much better if SDL told us when it needed more data and we just gave it when it needed right then. So let's change this callback to say, instead of it being null, let's give it an actual function pointer here. Um, audio, let's just call it feed audio device for now. I don't know, I might want to call back. I like to say callback in the name of the function so you know what this is doing. Um, you open the device the same way, except this will no longer, it, it will no longer actually let you queue, div, uh, queue audio. Uh, it won't let you use this function at all anymore because there will not be an audio queue. It'll just, as the device needs more data, SDL will call your callback function. You feed it data as fast as you can and then return and then no more CPUs used there. It, that runs in a separate thread that just waits until the audio device needs more data, asks you for it, and then goes on with its life and gives up the CPU in the meantime so you, that you do not sit there and just burn the CPU as hard as you can. So it does take a little bit more mental gymnastics. The nice thing about this and the reason we did this in a simple loop with feed more audio, which we're now deleting, boop, there we go, is because it's much easier to wrap your head around that. Because um, now we're going to have to deal with some threading issues and stuff like that. But just a couple of small ones, so let's deal with that right now. Okay, let's move this up so it's near the top. I'm just deleting that function and moving it up above init everything. What do we have? Let's move it up towards the top for now. Put below all our globals because we're going to need those. But this is kind of going to become a very important function to our uh, uh, to our whole effort. So we'll put that right near the top. Where'd you go? Okay, feed audio device callback is what this function is going to be called. And it's going to look a little different. Device callback. This will no longer be void, but I have to get the actual signature to sit tight for a second. So audio. Bin audio. Where are you at? Oh, audio callback. That's what it's called. Callback. There you are. Okay. Um, so the new function signature, that this, this is C gobbledygook for saying a type def to a function pointer instead of a function, uh, has to be SDL call. That's a little magic macro that does nothing on Linux, but this can be static. That's fine. Ah, lost it. Hang on a second. Let's pretend that just didn't happen. It can be static. There we go. Um, SDL call 
on some platforms like Visual using Visual Studio, this might say we want this to be uh, C declare, you know, some magic macro like that. Uh, that's compiler specific to say these are the calling conventions that should use because SDL might be built in many different ways. So you want to make sure that the it knows when it calls this callback function, regardless of how SDL was built, it will be called with arguments in the right registers or on the stack in the right place. So let's call this thing it's actually going to be called. And, and these are the parameters to that function. Okay, so let's make some changes to this now. We no longer have to check if there's enough audio data queued because this is only going to call when it needs more data. Um, and it calls a little bit ahead of when it actually needs to play it so that you don't get gaps in your audio. It'll say, oh, we're playing the last buffer, so we have a couple of milliseconds before we need to feed more audio to this device or play silence. So that's when it will call into your function. So we don't need to check this anymore. We now know absolutely unconditionally it needs audio right now. And when you're in a callback, you have to feed it data. If you don't have data available, you have to feed it silence. So what we're going to do is user data is your own pointer. We have this set to null right now um, because we're going to use a global variable. We might change this later. But for now, for all intents and purposes, you can ignore this. You got to write this data to stream in the data in the format that you open the audio device. And you got to write this many bytes, bytes, not samples, not sample frames, bytes to the audio device. Uh, and if you can't, you have to write silence. Um, let me make sure, because I'm going to feel bad if I'm wrong about that. Length of, see, and this is why you always check the documentation. The length of the buffer in bytes. It's so easy to just, you know, like I'm amazed that airplanes don't crash out of the sky because, you know, there's been, you know, people expected data to be in this format. And it was this, and it's uh, Celsius instead of Fahrenheit or degrees instead of radians or whatever like that. And just little honest mistakes between two people that expected, you know, metric versus whatever um, measurements. So always check the documentation. That's not an SDL tip. That's not a uh, media player tip. That's just a good life tip for writing programming where you have to talk to anybody else's code or even your own code because you'd be surprised what you can forget. Okay, so um, bytes remaining. This is going to stay. This is how much is left in our stream. Um, this thing just simply stops if it doesn't have enough, but now we need to make sure we definitely feed silence to this thing. So um, we know what's available to us to play back to the audio device. The stream is the thing that's converting data for us from whatever the wave file was originally. Um, so let's, let me see here. So const int silence len. Let's keep track of how much silence we have to write, which is the number of bytes the stream wants minus what we can actually feed it. So. Actually, we don't even have to do anything fancy like that. Let's do this. Bytes remaining. Um, in fact, we probably don't even have to do that. Let's just try and get data from the stream. It's fine. Uh, new bytes equals... And again, because we have to feed it as much as it asks for, which is probably not going to be 32 kilobytes. So that has a lot to do with... Um, where'd you go? Where'd you go? When we open this thing with samples, you want to give it an idea of how much this thing plans to buffer to the device. Bigger numbers means less calls to get more data from you, which is more efficient, but smaller number and smaller numbers mean less latency. The problem is smaller numbers also mean if your program is running behind, more chance of having skips in the audio. So this is kind of an aggressively large number. You can get much smaller than this, but for our purposes, uh, 4,096 samples at a time is, is a good place to be. So we'll stay there for now, and let me go find... Okay, so, uh, da, 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 so let's just try and get... Dun, dun, dun. Let's just try to get the number of bytes this thing wants. And it might be less, if, especially if we're at the end of the buffer, at the end of the audio stream. Uh, it might be less than uh, this thing wants. So converted buffer, dun, 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 dun. Okay, so let's make a little static thing here. Static. What was converted buffer before? I should have probably checked that. Come back. Where'd you go? Just hit undo a few times. Don't mind me. Oh, there it is. It's right there. We'll keep our 32 kilobyte converted buffer here for a second. Well, yeah, let's just do that for now. We might get fancy with the stack later on, but okay. So 
And then we'll, we'll keep our new bytes here, because it's, uh... You know what? Actually, we don't even have to... Let's not even do this in a, a big old thing. Let's just do it like this. We'll just give it... We'll just give it a kilobyte. Why not? We'll make it static, though, just to be nice, because this, this is only ever called... Well, let's just do a kilobyte for now and just live on the edge. That's fine. Um, okay, so what we're going to do... Size of converted buffer... So I think my way through this, don't mind me while len is greater than zero, because remember, you have to fill this, you have to initialize this buffer with something. If you don't have data, it's got to be silence. I'm going to say it 20 more times. Get used to it. So we're going to say, okay, we have this much space. We either need to get, we need to get whatever's less between what's left to feed the device and how much space we have in this buffer, because we don't want to overflow this array that we're keeping here. So then we read this the same way we did before. If we have more than zero, then we're going to, let's see, do all the same stuff. And then we do all our magic in here. This assert can still be true because there's never a time where SDL will ask you for half a sample frame. So this, if this assert triggers, disaster has happened and you should deal with it. Okay, so this is all just the same stuff. This is our balance slider magic here. And we're not going to cue the audio here anymore. We're just going to write it. Oh, you know what? We don't even need a converted buffer anymore. Let's get rid of that. So we won't even have to do this in a loop. We'll just write it right to the stream. So let's get rid of this. And just do number of converted bytes. Yeah, that's actually a better idea. This is getting much more simple. So we're going to say get this from the stream, put it right Oh, we have two things called stream. Let's, that's part of our problem. That's a global, and that's also called that. Let's change the name of this uh, variable. I'll put stream. And this is why they tell you not to use globals. But we're rebels. We're loners. We do what we want. So we're going to read from our input stream. We're going to dump it right into the output stream, which even though this is UN8, that's just to make it easy so that every time you add to this pointer, it moves by one byte address, but we don't there's a very good chance this is not actually UN8 data. It's probably In this case, it's always going to be floating point, because that's what we open the device for. Um, output stream. But it's going to be useful in a moment when we uh, see... Let me say length. That's how much data we want to get out of this thing. Uh, and we don't care about... Well, okay, we'll just... We'll, we'll still check if it's greater than zero here, but we don't actually have to do this. Samples... So we do this with number of converted bytes in there. Okay, so this is all the same magic as before. We're just one of the nice things that is here is we're losing indentation because we split this into a separate function. It's out of a couple of loops. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to be moving this stuff over. So let's do that. Okay. Um, so now we've said the audio device needs this much data. We've got this much. We've written it in there. We've processed it the way we intended to, and now. We're going to subtract len from num, whoops, num converted bytes now has number of bytes left after feeding the device. Everything that's left has to be silence. So I'm going to call SDL memset. Works just like memset. Don't need the C runtime. Oh, let's also move output stream by that much. Output stream, here's where it's nice that it's a UN8. You can just do a plus equal on it. Num converted bytes. Oops, there we go. Then we're going to say whatever's left in the output stream, let's do that. If length is greater than zero, because why do mem set if it's zero? Just, I mean, it's just going to return immediately, but save yourself the trouble. We're going to write just zero nulls to it, because with almost every, with the exception of um, unsigned integer audio data, everything uses zero for silence. But if we needed it, uh, we, d we do not save off the thing when we open the audio device. Where'd it go? We don't save this information off, but once you call open audio device, the structure will have a thing, you know, whatever this thing is. Desired.silence would be filled in by SDL open audio device with the actual value you should use for memset. 
up here. But we know this is always floating point. We know that if you write nothing but zeros there, then this will result in a floating point number, which is 0.0, .0 which is silence in this case. So we're just going to do that and not get fancy with it. And we're going to write len bytes of zero to the output stream, which we moved past the audio we did. So if there's stuff left here we could not fill in, we fill it with silence. And in this case, if the stream is totally empty, because this will be once we play the whole stream, numconvert bytes will always be zero. So we'll go right down to filling this with silence at the end uh, every time through. Because even once the music stops playing, it'll keep calling this function. Unless you call SDL pause audio device, but right now we just leave it playing all the time, even if we're just playing silence. Okay, so that's that. There's one other thing we have to check, because remember, this happens in another thread now. If stream equals null, if we do not have a file open at all for playing, then this is not going to work. So we're just going to go straight down to setting this to silence and get out. And now, I could just push all this stuff over in an else, but I'm not going to do that. Sometimes it's nice just to do the one thing it needs you to do and get out. Nothing playing, just write silence and bail. Sometimes, even though that is a little duplication, you could make that flow more elegantly. It makes it look uglier. Sometimes you want the special cases to be caught at the top and just get out of there as quickly as you can. Um, this is a good example of that. Dun, 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 dun. Good. Okay, so now that's doing that. We're going to do that. We no longer have to run through this loop every time. Um, trying to think where else we need this. So, like I said, this runs in another thread, so let's open audio something or other. Where'd you go? Open new audio file, that's what it is. So, this thing in another thread checks see if stream is null. But here's the magic thing that threads make everything into a nightmare about. When we open a new file, the first thing it does is call this, and then it sets the stream to null. Uh, and even if you were to save this off to a temporary variable and set stream to null first, you have a magic race condition here because this thing absolutely positively could be not null when you hit that callback in another thread even though you've already freed it no matter what you do here so we're going to use sdl lock audio device audio device i'm going to make sure i that's actually lock audio make sure i get that right where'd you go where'd you go there that's open audio device pause audio device we have too much documentation. Come on. There it is. Okay. Yeah, it's just the device ID from where we opened it. Okay. All this thing does... Do we have an unlock audio device too? Yeah, okay, same thing. All this thing does is basically set some mutex inside of SDL. Um, we're not going to check if this fails or anything. We're going to assume that the mutex always locks successfully. And all that does is says, hold up SDL, do not call my callback while this is locked. And... Since you have a little wiggle room of maybe a couple of milliseconds, SDL is able to wait while you do small things before calling your callback for new data, and it can still feed the device reliably. So we're going to lock it. We're going to free the audio stream, set it to null. Um, and then I think we'll probably unlock it right below that because it doesn't need anything but that audio stream. Let me see here. In fact... Yeah, I think that's probably fine. Let's let's just do that. Okay, so that basically means make sure the audio callback can't touch stream while we're freeing it. Freeing it. Um, let me think for a second. And. You know, actually, we probably want to lock this the whole way through here. Or at least, well, I mean, yeah, let's do that, actually. So stream is going to get set up down here. Let's make that a new thing. Hang on a second. Steal audio stream. Temp stream equals stream. Okay, yeah, let's, let's try to spend as little time with this thing locked as possible. So in the worst case scenario, you probably end up with it locked long enough to set the stream to null, and then it's going to play silence on the next callback if it happens to run at that time. But it can run and give you that silence. Then we do not have to have the thing paused while we're freeing the stream. Temp stream. Let's call it 
temp stream. Let's not be too ambiguous here. All right. And then it can free its other stuff, and that's fine. It can load a wave. It can take as long as it wants to read from disk. It doesn't matter. Call this stream. Call that temp stream. So this is all in a local variable, and it won't touch the global until we're ready for it. And then down here, don't free it. Where'd that thing go? Make stream new stream available to the audio device, audio callback thread. Yeah, okay. Stream equals temp stream. We're cool. Let's stop audio do. I just saw that there. This also frees it, so we want to catch that too. And for stopping, we'll just lock the audio device to start. There we go. And then unlock it. We don't care how long this takes. Stream. Okay, cool. Because it's going to play silence when you stop anyway. Cool. Okay, so that's going. That's nice. Um, let's just do a quick search for stream. See if there's any other ones we missed here. Okay, that's all the callback. We can skip all of that. Free the audio stream. We lock that. Okay. Open audio file. We do temp stream there, so we don't do that. Free, blah, blah, blah. Temp stream. Temp stream, temp stream. And then we set it to that. This is probably going to cause a... Well, no, the, you should be able... Okay, clear queued audio can go in our previous button because we do not have queued audio anymore, so that can go. Audio stream clear. You can clear a stream. It'll be thread safe anyway, and you can put to a stream, and that's thread safe, so we don't have to change any of that. And that's the only times we use that, so... Let's look for the word Q, too, since we're getting rid of that. Okay, we already got rid of all of those. That's good. So... Stop audio. Calls this in a few places, but that we protected that. And STL quit will close the audio device, although we should probably do that ourselves. Just Oh, we did. Okay, we're smart. Um, close audio device will lock the mutex and also stop calling the callback before it's done. So um, we don't need to do it there. Okay, good. Now, do you see how much time we spent writing this versus how much time we're spending thinking about thread safety issues? If you're wondering why I avoided this originally, is that you have to have more... Uh, headspace put onto this, more brain power put into this. Because these are the kind of things that can go wrong. You have to and they're subtle interactions and you have to think through them instead of just blasting out code. For example, this might not work. So we're gonna go and get an atomic pointer while we're thinking about it. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining atomic pointers to you. Atomic set, where are you? Set pointer, there you are. Also, always be scared when you see this in, a, in documentation. If you don't know what this function is for, you shouldn't use it. This is true. But for now, we do theoretically know what this is for, so we're going to do this. The idea being that an atomic pointer setting says no matter what thread and CPU core and, more importantly, CPU cache you're on, make sure that all the CPUs in the system, all the CPU cores in the system, see this change before they touch this pointer. So we're going to go set... stream, the address of stream, to null. So this means no matter what, this will definitely be seen next time something tries to touch this. Let's see what that other lock audio was. Lock audio device, unlock audio device. Yeah, okay. Set that to null there. Where was the other place we did this? Same thing here, except we're going to set it to temp stream. So now that'll be seen by everyone. And then, just for completeness, although you can probably get away with this in the callback, but... Do a atomic get pointer on this. And we'll call this SDL audio stream input stream equals... Okay, so we're just basically saying make sure that this thing gets the correct pointer 
when it sets it here. We should probably get more aggressive about this elsewhere, but I think we're going to start with this for now until it causes us problems. Knock on wood. Let's make sure we use that stream to input stream. Make sure we get all the right ones. If input stream is null, do do, done. I think that's it. Okay. Let's see if it works. Might work, might not. We'll find out. Return with no value. It is. Oh, that shouldn't be there. Sorry. Function pointer. But now this is an actual function, so that probably confused some things there. Let's see. Converted buffer. We no longer have that. Samples is now just float pointer output stream because they provided us with a buffer to write into. And that'll do that. Okay, cool. And then, oops. These are just those buttons we haven't hooked up yet from last time, so that can just stay there for now. That's a successful build. So this should still play everyone's favorite song. Here it comes. Except that's playing in another thread and we don't have to burn the CPU. We don't have to burn the CPU to get it to, um, you know, to play correctly without skips. I'm gonna hit rewind, just make sure we didn't break anything in the audio stream here. There we go, okay. So for all that, we're exactly where we started, but you learned something very, very important about how SDL feeds audio to the device. Now, if you were to use the audio cue that we were using before, all that is internally to SDL, it has a callback that it doesn't, inside of SDL, where when that callback comes, it pulls more data from the audio cue that you're feeding. So this is still the system that SDL uses, no matter which way you do it. But now we're getting down to the lower guts of what SDL actually does to get audio to the device. Um, so that's that. That's uh, we're at 26 minutes. Um, we did. We changed one little thing. This I should note is still burning CPU, and we will fix that later. That was not the explicit goal to fix that today. I was just saying this is one of the reasons that we had to burn the CPU uh, without giving up any time slices, so that we could feed the audio as it was necessary. But now SDL is handling that for us and only calling our callback when it needs to. So I think that's going to do it for today. And we will call it a day. And next time we'll do something else fun. Okay, this went a little longer than I wanted, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. We learned something very important. So, all right, cool. I will see you next time.